Hi, welcome to Craft Central Designs. I'm so pleased you stopped by my channel today. Look at these adorable Dollar Tree makeovers. The bunny, the chick, and the carrot came as a plain wood, freestanding wood block cutout, and I gave them all a makeover, as you can see. Welcome back to my current subscribers and to all visiting my channel today. I hope you enjoy this tutorial and if you are not a subscriber as of yet, I hope you will become one today. And as well, leave me your comments and let me know what you think of these makeovers. And also, if you would please give this video a thumbs up. Okay, let me show you how I gave these wood cutouts a whole new look. These are the supplies that you will need to create this project. I have here the wood cutouts that I mentioned before. This is the chick. These are actually really nice. They stand up on their own and they come um, at the, obviously $1.25 from uh, the Dollar Tree. And the wood bunny is so cute. I love the way it's standing up. And the wood carrot. And I'm going to make these wood cutouts into something so cute. So I uh, did purchase my scrapbook papers at Hobby Lobby because they don't carry scrapbook papers at the Dollar Tree. Um, I'm also going to be using um, some little flower uh, wood cutouts, which they do have at the Dollar Tree and also at Hobby Lobby. So I chose my uh, scrapbook papers. I went, I only go uh, get my scrapbook papers at Hobby Lobby when they're 40% off. So I chose my papers that I was going to use for each of the three pieces. And I have a selection of buttons, uh, some narrow ribbons to make little bows for uh, each of the pieces actually are, is getting a bow. For the bunny, I chose this really pretty rose uh, floral print scrap of paper for the front of the bunny. And it turns out so cute. I'm also going to use a flower with my bunny. Now this is optional, either you like it or you don't. Just leave it off if you don't care to add the bunny. Maybe you just wanna do your wood pieces uh, without the flowers, that's fine. I'm just giving you an option and that's what I chose for mine. I have your selection of ribbons that will go with that pink uh, rose floral print scrapbook paper. I also uh, needed to get pink and uh, yellow, uh, no, I'm sorry, pink, orange, and yeah, yeah, and yellow, I'm sorry, oh my goodness, uh, paint to paint the sides of each of those wood cutouts. I just gathered up all of my um, different types of buttons and the, and little stickers and whatever I thought I might want to use on this piece. So for the carrot, I had to choose one scrap of paper for the top of the carrot and then one obviously for the bottom. So I have an orange, uh, it's a little tiny polka dot, a little difficult to see there. And then the uh, scrap of paper I chose for the top of the carrot is a very small um, gingham check going to be using uh, some uh, ribbons and twine for my carrot. I also used a gingham check ribbon for that carrot, which I got at the Dollar Tree. And I have there the orange paint. I'm going to be using a Mod Podge to adhere my scrapbook papers to my wood cutouts. So I need a sponge applicator and something to uh, pour the Mod Podge on. You'll need the regular crafting tools, Aileen's tacky glue, a pencil, scissors, and a hot glue gun, of course, and a paintbrush. Also a piece of, uh, I use saran wrap or some kind of plastic bag that works really nicely to spread out, uh, to go over your scrapbook paper after you Mod Podge it. This project 
is so fun and I think it's really very suitable for the beginner crafter. So um, I'm going to go about tracing around each one of my wood block pieces on the respective scrapbook papers that I picked for each one. So I went ahead and I did that for all the pieces. I just uh, placed my uh, wood gut out down on the scrapbook paper, traced around it with a pencil, and cut it out with the scissors. Now, I did not put the same scrapbook paper on each side of my bunny. Maybe you do want to do that, but if you do, remember to um, be sure that you have enough. You may have to purchase two pieces of scrapbook paper per, um, per wood piece. Some of the scrapbook papers come in smaller sizes, some are larger. So just keep that in mind when you pick out your scrapbook papers. And I did the same thing for the flowers, traced around them the bottom of the flower. I believe that was a polka dot. And then the uh, flower that I chose uh, to go with my bunny is uh, a pink polka dot. Same for my chick. Um, I did... Um, my scrapbook paper is different on each side. Now, each one of these pieces actually has a primary front side, if you will. But just so it's not unsightly on the back, I did put scrapbook paper. Now, remember, for the chick, you have to cut out orange for the feet and for the nose. Again, I traced around it. It was very simple. So our chick is going to be a white polka dot yellow on yellow. And I have a little uh, tiny polka dot um, scrapbook paper to use for the flower and a polka dot for the bottom or the stem of the flower. Now here we are um, with the carrot. I traced around the top of the carrot with my little green gingham check there. The carrot has actually got tiny polka dots. And again, I mentioned before that I have an assortment of buttons. I have an orange heart there, some various other buttons. I just gather everything that I think that I might want to use, but also I show you so you realize there's lots of options for this piece. Those are sticker flowers with a little shiny little gem in the center. Very cute. I got those at Hobby Lobby in the sticker department. Now, I'm, I mentioned before that I'm going to be painting the sides of each of the pieces. Obviously, the carrot will be green uh, on the top and orange on the bottom. I'm not showing you the green there. I hadn't had a, an opportunity to bring out my green paint yet. But the yellow, obviously, for the chick. And around the beak and the feet, it's going to be orange. Remember to paint the sides of your piece in accordance to how your paper is going to be sitting on that piece. Now, I had this idea uh, that Chick was missing something, and what it was missing was wings. So I went in my stash, and I remembered that I had these little, they're kind of like teardrop-shaped uh, wood cutouts. I had gotten those for something. I don't remember. I think I had gotten them on Amazon last year. But you could take a large craft stick and just cut them out of a craft stick. Uh, they, those big craft sticks cut very well with just a pair of scissors. So I have a paper towel down now to protect my surface. And I'm going to go about painting all of my wood pieces. Again, in accordance to how the scrap of paper is going to be lying on that particular piece. Now for this one, I'm just going to paint all the way around it with pink. But when I do the chick, I have to be mindful of where the nose is and where the feet are. So I can paint the sides with the orange to match the beak and the feet. For the carrot, same thing. Green around the leaves, the rest of it orange. I uh, got the stickers off of the back of those Dollar Tree wood cutouts. I had to use my uh, heat gun because those stickers were on there like uh, crazy. <laughs> so I had to scrape them off with a spatula. 
And now I'm showing you here, I'm just taking a paintbrush and I'm going to paint all around the perimeter of that very cute bunny. Now I did apply two coats all the way around each of the pieces because it seemed like the first coat just kind of soaked in and it was kind of splotchy. So I just went over it one more time very quick with um, an added layer of paint. Now you see what I mean there about the orange. Remember to paint your sides in accordance to where how your scrap of papers are sitting on there. So I have everything all cut out and ready to go. I have my sides painted. You can see the carrot up there at the top, the green at the top, orange around the carrot. And with those little uh, wings that I created with the wood pieces, I just, uh, I'm going to, again, trace around those so I can cover them with scrap of paper. I did put wings on both sides of the chick, but again, for my pieces, and if you wanna do both sides identical, go for it. Just do whatever you, whatever you like. Um, I, I did, I covered the backs of mine as much as I felt need be, um, but they have an intended front side. So I didn't do the backs of everything on the pieces, but I didn't want them to look unsightly on the back. I'm showing you there my little button options for my flower. That carrot comes out so cute. As you can see there, that scrap of paper is going to look fabulous on that wood cutout. Everything is going to be Mod Podged on to the wood cutouts. So remember which side you intend to be the front, especially with this um, bunny and with the chick, of course. So I wanted my bunny facing toward the left. So I applied my favorite paper on the front of that. And again, like I said, if you want both sides the same, fine, go, you know, do that. I'm just here for inspiration. <laughs> I mean, do as you like. I love these flowers. Now, again, your choice. Use them, don't use them, whatever you like. I just kind of thought, you know, springtime, Easter, a flower. I don't know. It all seemed to go together to me. And I did end up using those heart buttons uh, on my flowers, which I really love that look. I have these beautiful ribbons. There's that orange gingham check. I use that on my carrot. The pinks, of course, go on the bunny. And I'm using burlap colors as well as that orange gingham check on the carrot. This is going to look so good, as you will see in a bit. So next up, we are going to Mod Podge everything onto all of the pieces. And I'll show you just a bit of that, but I'm not going to show you all of them because that's rather redundant because this is a very easy thing to do. Use a sponge applicator. These are easily found at the Dollar Tree, at Walmart, or any craft store. I do have a balled up piece of saran wrap. I like to use that to smooth out my paper once I apply it to the piece. I'm putting a nice even layer of Mod Podge, making certain that I have everything all um, coming out to the sides, all the Mod Podge reaching out to the sides. And you'll notice that I do small sections at a time, just to be sure everything's aligned perfectly Usually if you get the top right, everything else obviously will fall into place down the rest of the piece. Now, if you have any overhang where you, obviously when you trace this out, it's not gonna be exactly 100% um, and perfect to the uh, 
alignment uh, or the perimeter of the bunny. So you can use a sanding block if you'd like or a zip sander. Um, but once you do that, it does affect the the edges of the piece where you are using that zip sander or the sanding block. Sometimes it will take the color off of the scrapbook paper on the edges. Now, if you like the look of that, that's great. That's you do you, that's fine. Um, but I personally like to just trim mine up and I use just my regular scissors, but I also use a tiny pair of scissors that I picked up at uh, Dollar Tree at some point in time. So I finish all that up and I now have everything Mod Podged on to all of my pieces and it looks so good. The transformation of these plain wood block pieces. And by the way, Dollar Tree did a great job providing those for us to decorate this Easter season. I'm going to make a or an orange gingham check bow. And I just fold over my loops and I secure them in the middle. There's going to be two loops on each side or four loops all together. And I made that bow just about the width of the greenery on the top of that carrot. I'm going to make a layered bow because I want lots of visual interest and patterns um, on my carrot. I use a little silver wire to close um, or wrap around those bows or those loops to keep everything together. Next, I'm going to add a burlap with white polka dots. I thought burlap would look really pretty on this carrot. Sometimes when I just do like little figure eight bows, and that's what you see me doing here, I'm just creating my loops and a figure eight and um, holding them in the center with my thumb and my index finger. Again, I use a little piece of wire, wrap it around, twist it in the back, and then I'm going to snip that off because I'm going to be stacking these uh, bow layers and I want to get as much of a flush application as possible. Now I have a little uh, burlap colored gingham check, which you can see there, I'm just doing in a figure eight. I just wrap them around and around in the shape of an eight. That's how I do mine. You do you, however you like to do little, little small bows. And again, I'm using just a little piece of silver wire. You could pick up um, silver wire at Dollar Tree. It's usually in, uh, around the floral section or the section where they keep all of the wire uh, wreath frames. Now I, um, I'm going to be placing that orange heart <laughs> right in the middle of my bow. I just thought that was really, really cute. And um, to attach the bow all together, now you can either use a piece of wire and stack the bows and wrap it around and twist the wire in the back, or you could just use hot glue to stack one bow next on top of the other. I believe that's what I did with this piece. I just used hot glue. It's simple enough to do that when you have a little bow with very narrow ribbons. I don't do that with my big bows, but for little ones I do. Okay, so now I'm going to wrap the um, area there between the carrot and the greenery. I'm gonna wrap around that pretty twisted uh, burlap. It's white and burlap color uh, twine. I believe I got that at Michael's. It came in a multi-pack. I got those ribbons on clearance at Michael's, those um, burlap colored ribbons. So I wrapped um, my burlap around there. Now I'm also going to do additionally 
a little bit of a loopy bow with my um, burlap twine there. And that's going to be resting right on the carrot and the greenery and kind of just peeking up around the, um, the bow with the narrow ribbons that I just created. So make my loops just a little bit bigger. Again, a figure eight shape. You could see, I'll just think figure eight. And then just to, in the center, just use your fingers to hold it in the center of the eight. I ended up using three loops on each side for this part. I absolutely love the way this carrot came out. Just so cute. I'm using a little piece of wire there to secure those loops of that burlap twine. Twist it in the back, then I'll snip it off with my uh, wire cutters. And I like to use needle nose pliers to like squish my wires so that they're really, really flat. I often use those when I do a bow. They're very nice, uh, very handy to have in your uh, crafter's tool stash, if you will. Now see how pretty that is. I left some tails on it because I really wanted those to kind of cascade down the carrot. I'm going to use a dab of hot glue, glue that right to that twine that I wrapped around that carrot. Look how this is coming together. I didn't have my finger protector there, so I just was using my scissors to secure that down. And then I'm going to pop that bow right on top of that twine bow. And then I'm going to trim down the tails of my narrow ribbons. And I do not dovetail them, I just angle them. You do you, and cut the tails to the length that you prefer. I love this carrot and it looks so cute uh, resting on its side. It will stand up on its own. Uh, any of these pieces will stand up on their own, but if you bump, obviously if you bump a table or wherever they're resting, they're gonna tip over. So, but see how nice that sits. Um, but if you want, you could always put a um, Jenga block or some type of little wood piece in the back at the base of the uh, piece, and that will help to hold it steady. Look at these yummy, delicious pink ribbons. Oh my gosh. Now, uh, I wanted to mention that I had the teeny, tiny little buttons that I got at Hobby Lobby in the sewing department. And I used one of those teeny, tiny, tiny black buttons for an eyeball for my uh, bunny. Now you could use a really tiny uh, black bead as well. I'm going to, uh, I didn't show my me making this bow because you just saw me make a bow. So I didn't feel that was necessary. So um, I'm going to uh, hot glue that bow to the back of the neck of the bunny. I'm a little bit out of frame there, but I'm going to show you how that turned out right on the back of the neck so that it kind of trails down the back of the bunny. Oh my goodness. Look how cute that is. And that very plain wood bunny block is now becoming something completely off the charts. <laughs> Adorable. So I'm just holding that bow there till the hot glue dries. What in the world? I think what happened was I decided that I didn't, I had a button on there and then I decided, uh, no, I'm going <laughs> to wrap a piece of ribbon around instead. So that's what you saw me doing there. Instead of the button that I had on there, 
I decided it was too bulky, so I just wrapped around a piece of the polka dot ribbon and I glued it back on. Fortunately, I realized that before the glue set. So I have my little flower on there, but I'm going to, um, uh, uh, the flower that I did there, it's all very elementary. I just um, took the Mod Podge and put my papers on and I put a um, little heart button right in the center. Now I glued my flower to my bunny. Now I'm gonna showing you here how I did that with the chick. So I stand my piece up if you wanna use this flower. I stand my piece up and I apply my flower to the piece where I want it on the piece, but I make sure it's level with the bottom of the rest of the wood block, um, whether it's the chick or the bunny. So that's why I stand it up to be sure that it's even with the bottom of the chick. And I did the same thing with the bunny. Now you'll notice uh, on that flower, I added an extra little wood round on there. I did it on both of them, covered it with a scrapbook paper uh, of a different uh, pattern. And then I popped my little button right in the center. But I felt that the flower needed a little bit of uh, something extra. Okay, now I'm gonna actually show you how I did that. See how I set it on the table and then I just glue my flower right to the bunny. But I tried to place my flower as much out to the side as I could. I just added some hot glue and remembering where I wanted to place it, I just put the glue on the back side of my flower, made sure that it was level or even with the bottom of the bunny so the bunny would stand up properly. So now my bunny has a spring flower next to it. And I think that's just so cute. But again, if you would rather have just the bunny, that's fine as well. They're, it's adorable either way. So I also put an eyeball on my chick and um, <laughs> my button, it's the eyeball on the chick, believe it or not, I put a, a black button that's got little tiny white polka dots. So my chick has a button for an eye that is black with white polka dots. You'll be able to see that. I'll show you that in a minute. So I wanted a little tiny bow on the head of my chick. So I made a really tiny white bow. And in the center, I'm going to place a little yellow flower that has a little shiny gem in the center. I got those, um, uh, again, I mentioned that I think, or maybe I didn't. I got those in the sticker department at Hobby Lobby. And I'm going to put it right on the, the uh, head of my chick. You see, I have my wings all on there. My flower is all adhered. And I'm gonna, I want it to kind of poke up like that. I want the loop of the bow, not like that. Yeah, like that. Kind of poking up. Hot glued that on, and you could see the, the eyeball with the little polka dots. I have my own unique perspective on my craft, so. All right, so the nose, or I'm sorry, the beak was bothering me. The, the where it came together with the, uh, the beak came together with the face, it was bothering me. It had no line of definition there enough for me. So 
I decided to take some very tiny rickrack. You could do the same thing if you had an orange and white uh, baker's twine. I actually have that as well, but I had this tiny rickrack and I decided to use it to uh, create a kind of delineation of the beak from the head of the chick. So I used um, some Aliens Tacky Glue and I put that on. I also put a, look, I'm showing you there. I also put a line of rickrack down the center of my flower stems. I don't know if you noticed that I did that right there. Just a little added touch, just a little something, something to make it even cuter than it is. I am just a little crazy about these wood cutout makeovers. Look how cute that is. Now you can really see the the polka dot eye. Like I said, I, I have a very unique uh, perspective on my crafts. I mean, I don't know if I've ever seen anyone use a polka dotted eye, but I did. I did it. I did it today. Now you can see I'm showing you everything all completed. Again, if you find your pieces fall over, simple enough. Put a little piece of wood, maybe a couple of Jenga blocks in the back. Like I said, these pieces have fronts. Obviously, you can see that by the way I created them. Love, love these pieces. And here you have them all together. And they're just simply adorable. I hope you love these and see how easy it is to, to transform Dollar Tree items. If you like what you see on my channel, I hope you will consider subscribing if you are not already. Let me know what you think of these pieces in the comments. And until next time, you all take care.